G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're running through uh, part 12 of my Learn Dynamo series. So today we're looking at solids and how to convert them into Revit massing. So we've previously looked at um, a lot of other categories of geometry and we're getting quite close to the end of the series now. Um, from here we really just have a demonstration of what we've learnt and then just a conclusion of where to go from here. So previously we looked at surfaces and solids as the next best step from here. So we're going to keep it Revit focused. We're going to work with uh, Revit examples where possible rather than abstract examples um, that are overcomplicated. So we've looked at coordinate systems, points, curves, lines, and polycurves, and we've just looked at surfaces, faces, and polysurfaces. So now we're looking at solids and how to get them to Revit. So we're going to avoid complexity where possible, uh, just because that can usually turn people off Dynamo. Um, and we'll jump into Dynamo now just to show some examples. So I've just built a couple of masses in a Revit model. Um, one's a loft through a few, a few profiles and it's overlapping in just a box mass. Um, these are both solid generic model masses in principle. Um, I've also got a whole bunch of nodes that we're using as a toolbox to demonstrate how to construct solids in Dynamo and how to interact with Revit solids as well. So we'll just start at the top. So I've started with the most simple types of solids there are. Um, the first one that I'm looking at is what's called a cuboid, which is basically just a cube. Uh, defined by our origin and a width, length, and height. And these can be handy for data visualization. So if you're trying to find points, but then graphically show them, um, cuboids can sometimes be a suitable tool in order to do that. So you can see there that they only exist in the Dynamo environment and they just give you a cube. Um, and you can also interrogate the size of cuboids as well using these nodes here. Um, and any solid that is closed, um, which they typically all have to be, um, you can also interrogate their area uh, their volume, so their area is their to total surface area, and their volume is obviously their volume, and the centroid is the, the center point of that of that solid. So if I just turn my preview off, you'll see I've got a center point, um, which essentially would be the same as the original origin point. Um, so we could cross-check that that is correct, for example. Um, you can also generate spheres. Um, you can do cuboids by corners if you know the low point and the high point, so essentially the lowest corner and the highest corner. Um, spheres are basically the same thing. They have a center point or a radius. You can also generate them by four points because any four points have to lie on the surface of a sphere um, or by best fit. So a sphere that will try to encompass a set of points as well as possible. Um, so a best fit. Um, you can also get the radius and the center point back out of spheres as well. And typically I use these for data visualization as well, most commonly, or to do um, tests of distances in 3D. So if you want to find out if a certain point is within, uh, say, 30 meters, um, you could do an intersection test using a sphere from a certain point uh, based on another point. Um, there's a lot of other types of geometry as well that you can generate, such as cones and cylinders. Uh, but I won't go into those because they're not highly relevant to most um, design examples. Usually things like lofts will be more useful than these forms but they are available. Um, and we've shown how to do lofts and we've mentioned sweeps and revolves um, based on surfaces in our last tutorial. So we won't go into them in this one in too much detail, but essentially they generate the same type of form, uh, but obviously they're a closed solid instead of just a uniform surface with no caps on the end. So they're the same method generated by cross sections for lofts, for example, um, but they give you a closed solid as the output. But what we're going to do now, which is more handy, is we're going to deal with element to solid. Um, so we're going to take some model elements. In this case, we've taken this form here and that form there just by going change and we'll select. And then that adds that element. Once we've got these, we can basically use the element geometry node in order to get these as solids. So I'll just do a fit. And you'll see now we've got those two pieces of geometry in Dynamo. And from there we can do a lot of things with them. So one thing we can do is, uh, I'll just turn off this box and we'll just focus on this twisted form first. Um, you can basically fill at the edges if you know the edges of the form. So we're gonna take this solid and we're gonna get its edges and you'll see that that will give us a list of all the edges. Keep in mind you won't see them as lines because lines and curves are different things in Dynamo. But what we can do now is actually fill it, that solid along those edges by a fixed radius to generate a new form. And you'll see, there we go, we have a fillet applied to all the edges of that form. So that's quite a helpful node when you're doing, um, say, furniture modeling, for example, and you want to turn that geometry into something more smooth. Um, you can also do what's called shells as well. So you can shell inside and outside from the external face. So I'll just stop generating those edges. So if I run that again, you'll see now we have the same form, but it's been shelled further out as a solid. 
Um, you can also shell inside as well to make form smaller, I believe. Um, so just something to be aware of. Um, a really handy thing in Dynamo 2 is that by default you'll see that all the geometry just comes out as grey. Um, and it's solid as well, so it's hard to see when things are overlapping. So what you can do is turn off their preview. And you can use what's called geometry colour by geometry colour and feed geometry into these nodes. And we're just setting the geometry's colour using a colour by ARGB. And the important thing to note here is A, which is alpha, and that's how transparent is the object. So we're saying it's 50% transparent, and then we're just setting a colour to each of those. So if I just run that instead, and I preview these, we get the same geometry, but instead it's got transparency and colour. Keep in mind that this is an output called geometry colour. Um, so you can't send this through as geometry to further nodes. You still need to rely on the actual geometry itself. This is more like a dynamo preview. Um, which can be quite helpful when you're trying to visualize what's happening with your forms. So I'll just turn the preview off for those. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what's called unions and differences. So this is basically ways of merging or subtracting forms from one another. So the first thing we're going to do is just check if two forms do intersect. So we're going to take the geometry of that twisted form and then the geometry of the, uh, the box over it, which we know intersects. And we're just going to run this node. And we should get a true, which we do, because they both intersect. Obviously, if they didn't, you'd get a false. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to run what's called a union between them. So this will take two solids, and it will merge them into one solid. So our output is just a solid. And you can see that it is the combined form that we end up receiving as a result. You can also do what's called a difference as well. So this will give you what doesn't overlap between them. So in this case, we just get the bottom of that intersection. So we just get the bottom half there, which you can see highlighted in a preview in Revit. So that's a way to obtain a, a difference between two forms. Um, you can also run differences between all. So you can run one solid plus um, a whole bunch of solids as a list. And you can also union a whole bunch of solids as well. This is really helpful for building, say, a city environment to run a collision test with um, sun rays, for example. From there, we also have the option to actually import geometry to project. So I'm just going to show you an example of importing some geometry into the project itself. So we're going to take the difference of those two forms and we're just going to feed those there. So we want to import that to the project. So we'll run that. And what that should have done is actually imported a CAD file that has. So it's basically a CAD import. I believe it might even be an SAT import in this case. Um, it gets given an ID. Um, it doesn't actually get linked from anywhere. It's a CAD import. Um, you can obviously explode it if you want. I uh, don't usually recommend that. Um, the problem with importing into projects is you can't source these for mass faces like you could in Revit typically. You can only source this base mass that I'm working with, but I can't select the, the new masses uh, geometry. So what we need to do instead is work in a conceptual massing environment which we'll do in a second. And the first thing, the, the, the last thing I'm gonna check in this environment is a tool called bounding box. So the bounding box is basically the dynamo axis aligned box that will encompass a piece of geometry. So let's just take this box on top and we'll just preview that box. There it is. And it's important to note that in dynamo as well as Revit, the box isn't rotated to X, Y, it's rotated uh, against it. So the bounding box is always going to work to the dynamo axis origin. Um, so what we're going to do is just run this and we'll get a maximum and a minimum point for the bounding box because we're feeding those into bounding, bo bounding box max and min point. So you can see in Revit, our min and our max point are actually axis aligned, not geometry aligned. So this is a good way for working with geometry in a multitude of orientations if you need to just work in a common uh, bounding system. Um, but it can be difficult to process this if you need it to be aligned to the geometry rather than to the axis itself. That's where you need to actually mix and match the um, geometry's uh, rotation uh, with the bounding box. So we'll just go back to Dynamo. Um, but what you can do with bounding boxes is also generate cuboids or poly surfaces, um, check if they intersect, find the intersections. So we're just going to run that. And what it will do is give us a cuboid and now you'll see the difference between the geometry and its bounding box. So the geometry is here, but its bounding box is orientated towards uh, Dynamo's 
Dynamo's North reference, which is Rabbit North. So you can see how bounding boxes work now. But it can be helpful for finding the height of elements sometimes if you don't know which edge to use to find the height. Because um, obviously the minimum to the maximum point from a Z perspective will give you the overall height of an element um, orientated towards the Z axis. So we're going to move on to just a small demonstration script and a different environment in order to import geometry to a massing environment. So what we're going to do is just open a, a small massing project that I've set up. And all it has is a face in it in principle. So it's quite a quite a um quite a basic project at the moment. There's not really a lot that defines a mass. And this is sort of the starting point for our next lesson. So I won't go too in detail about how this has been set up. But I've basically built a dynamo function which will generate a tower form. Um, so if I run this script and I'll just I'll just make sure my face is selected as my input, because that's all that starts off the definition. I'll just pick that face and I'll run my script and there's my tower form. Now at the moment this is just dynamo geometry being previewed. Um, it's not it hasn't been imported as a mass reference. You can also see it here in Dynamo as well. Um, I've built the script in a way such that it can be run in automatic mode and these values can be played with. So you can change the twisting of the tower and change the number of iterations that define the twist and also the maximum height of the tower as well, as well as where the first level begins at. So that's just a starting point for, for the next lesson we're going to look at. But what we really care about is this node here, import instance by geometry. So we're gonna unfreeze that node in manual mode. We just want it to import once. So we're gonna run that once. And now in our massing environment, you'll see we have that import again. The only difference this time is if we have our demonstration project, we should be able to use this as a source for mass geometry. So I'll load this conceptual massing family into my project. And it will turn mass on. So there's our mass. And what we should be able to do now is when we do a wall by face, you'll see that it will let us source these faces now in order to generate surfaces in Revit. So this is how we can connect Dynamo's massing uh, to Revit itself. So quite a helpful tool. Um, we can also do roof, roof by face also. And now you can see that this is a this is a way of keeping keeping things in line with a mass. If our mass changed, all we need to do is select all our elements. This is probably a tutorial in itself. Update to face. And there we go. Now we're matching our dynamo mass again. So that's how we connect those two environments in principle. Um, so that pretty much covers the, the demonstration for this portion before we move on to a more practical demonstration um, in context of a tower form. So there's a, there's a primer and a forums if you're looking for any more help or any more uh, tutorials from other people. Um, but our next lesson, we're gonna put it all together into a demonstration, putting a, a tower into Revit um, and adding some intelligence from Dynamo uh, using geometry. So hopefully you've enjoyed that today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.